This is our lesson for section 5 of chapter 14 in Math 1100. Up to this point in chapter 14, we have been dealing with something called rational expressions. And we have learned to add and subtract and multiply and divide those rational expressions. We've learned that sometimes when we were adding and subtracting those rational expressions that we needed a least common denominator to be able to work with those. So we've learned how to find a least common denominator. But now we're ready to use those skills to do something new. And the new thing is that we're going to be able to solve equations that have rational expressions as their terms. Now the key here is that you can only solve an equation because the only way you can solve, that is come up with something like x equals, is if the equals already is in the equation, and equations have an equal sign. So that's a very important thing to remember, is that equations have an equal sign. Whereas expressions, there is no equal sign to begin with, so you can't just toss one in. It must already have the equal sign to solve. So expressions have no equal sign, and therefore the only thing we can do with them is simplify them. which means we can add them together, or subtract them, multiply them, divide them, remove common factors, but we can't solve unless there's an equal sign. So let's look at how we're going to solve rational expressions. We have a set of steps, and our first step, step one, is to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And we know how to find the least common denominator of a rational expression from sections 1 through 4. So we know how to find the least common denominator, and we're going to multiply every term in that equation by that least common denominator. Once we've done that, then the result will be that we actually don't have a rational equation any longer, we'll have an equation that is no longer in rational expression form. It will be a linear equation. It won't have denominators. And we'll be able to solve that equation actually quite easily just by simplifying it, which means we're going to remove any grouping symbols. We're going to combine like terms and then we'll solve the resulting equation. That's only the first two steps, that's step one and step two. Step three is an equally important step, and I know a lot of times when we solve linear equations that you skip this step because you think, oh, I'm, you know, I don't want to find out that it doesn't check, but if it doesn't check, then you don't have the correct answer. So step three is just as important as the other two. You need to check the solution, not just because you might have made a mistake, but in the original equation, you need to remember that there were denominators, and we have the restriction with rational expressions that we cannot divide by zero. And we know that I have said it over and over again, you cannot do this. That's one of the two cardinal sins. We cannot divide by zero. And what could happen in the process of turning rational expressions into linear terms is that we may lose the restriction of not being able to have um, a zero in the denominator because the solution we come up with may introduce a zero into one of these expressions denominators. So it's very important to do step three. So now we're ready to do an example. And for our first example, we have two rational expressions in our linear equation. 
and then we have a 1, which also could be considered a rational expression if you consider that it's 1 over 1. So the denominator of our first fraction is 3x, and that has two factors. The first factor of that denominator is 3, and the second factor of that denominator is x. Now, you need to remember, too, that 6 also has two factors because it can be factored into 2 times 3. So 6 is 2 times 3. And we know that when we find an LCD, that our goal is to include at least one copy of every factor from every denominator. So that means our LCD is going to have the 2. It's also going to have to have the 3, but we don't want two copies of the 3. We just want one. So we'll keep this one, and we won't put it in again. And then our third factor of our LCD is x. And don't multiply your LCD out. Even though in some of the examples that you'll see in the book it shows that you multiply it out, it actually works much better if you don't because since you're removing common factors, you already have it factored. And that makes it easier to see what your common factors are. So we're going to take our equation and we're going to multiply each one of its terms by 2 times 3 times x. And I'm going to use the parentheses. So here's our LCD. We're going to multiply that LCD times 5 over 3x. And to that LCD we have added the number 1 and we're going to multiply that LCD times 1 also. So that's going to be 2 times 3 times x times 1. And that's going to be equal to our LCD 2 times 3 times x times 7 over 6. So now we need to remove common factors, and this is where the magic happens, that we have a, an equation that has rational expressions in it, and in our next step there will be no rational expressions. So in the first step, this 3 removes this 3 from the common denominator, and this x removes this x from the common denominator, which leaves us with 2 times 5. And 2 times 5, of course, is 10. Then we move on to the next term. And notice that there is no denominator here, so none of our LCD is going to disappear. We're going to keep it all. But at this step, we're going to multiply it out. So we have 2 times 3 times 1, which is 6, and then we also have the x. And then we have the equal sign, and on the other side, we have 6, which we know is 2 times 3, so we'll take the 6 and remove both the 2 and the 3, and then what we have left 
is x times 7, which is 7x. And then our next step would be to subtract 6x from both sides. which would eliminate 6x here and leave us with 10 equals 7 minus 6 is 1x, so 10 equals x. So we think that's the solution, but at this point we've only completed two of the three steps. So our third step is to replace x with 10 in the original equation, remembering that the original equation was 5 over 3x plus 1, and it was supposed to be equal to 7 over 6. So if we replace the x with 10, you can either multiply out 3 times 10 and have 5 over 30, or you can realize at this point that 10 is in fact 5 times 2, and we can remove a common factor of 5, which means that that first term then is 1 over 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 if you write it as a fraction so that we'll have a fraction with this common denominator here, that would be 6 over 6, which is a unit fraction, just means that anything over itself has a value of 1. And then, since we have a common denominator of 6, 1 plus 6 is 7 over 6, and 7 over 6 is, in fact, equal to what it's supposed to be, 7 over 6. So our solution checks. That means the solution to our equation is x equals 10 because we solved it and got that value and that solution does check in the original equation. So again, it is key. You should always check your solution in the original equation. So now we'll move on to another example. A little bit more complicated. So the first thing we're going to want is we're going to want to want to find the LCD. And we realize on the first equation we have 2 times x on the first term. And then we have on the second term we have x plus 1. So then we move on, and you might be tempted to multiply 3x squared plus 3x as your third factor since it doesn't appear to have anything in common with those, but actually it does. 3x squared plus 3x has a common factor of 3x. So it factors to 3x times x plus 1. So looking then at what we have, we have x plus 1 already listed. 
we have an X already listed. What we're missing is that last three. So we're going to keep this three, and that tells us that the LCD is two times three times x times x plus one. So there's our LCD. So we're going to do this one term at a time. Two times three times x times x plus one times one over two x. So when we remove common factors, the two is removed as a common factor. The x is removed as a common factor. And then what we have left is 3 times x plus 1 times 1. And since the 1 doesn't change anything, we're going to leave it off at that. So then we move on to the next part. Minus, and our next term is 1 over x plus 1. So going back and looking at the LCD that we started out with, assuming that we still have everything, the only thing that is in common here with the LCD is the x plus 1. So we have for the next part, minus 2 times 3 times x, but not the x plus 1. We don't have that. But we do have another factor of 1, and here again, the, the fact, that other factor of 1 doesn't change what that is. So we'll move on to the equal sign. So at this point, since I've kind of messed up my common denominator, I think I'm going to erase it and rewrite it. So that common denominator was 2 times 3 times x, times x plus 1. And now we're working with this expression, which is 1 over 3x times x plus 1. After we factored it. So what it has in common is the 3 and the x, and the x plus 1. So the only remaining factor then is going to be this 2 times the 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. So again, we see that when we've multiplied the entire equation by the least common denominator, we wind up with an equation that has no rational expressions. And we need to remove parentheses to simplify and then solve the equation. So 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times plus 1 is plus 3, minus 2 times 3 is 6, times x is 6x. And that's equal to 2. 
So now we need to collect like terms. 3x minus 6x is negative 3x plus 3 equals 2. Then we'll subtract 3 from both sides. And that leaves us with negative 3x equals 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 over negative 3. And since negative over negative is positive, then that's 1 over 3. So we think the solution is 1 over 3. But again, remember we need to check that solution. So here's our original equation. And we're going to plug in x is equal to one third. So in the original equation, We'll have 1 over 2 times 1 third, which is 2 thirds. Minus 1 over 1 third plus 1, and 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. is equal to, and the next part's a little more complicated, so I'm actually going to do that one out before I simplify and put it over on the other side. Three times one-third squared plus three times one-third is equal to one over One-third squared is one-ninth. And that makes three over nine. But three over nine reduces to one-third. And then three times one-third is three-thirds. So that's one-third plus three-thirds, so that again that is four-thirds. So what we're actually going to put on the other side of the equal sign is one over four-thirds. So I'm going to suggest you pause here and make sure that you understand where all of this part came from. Because this is what we're going to work with to finish solving the problem. To finish checking the solution, in other words. Now at this point you can check that by using your calculator, but you have to be very careful if you're going to use your calculator to use appropriate grouping symbols. Remember that's 1 over the fraction 2 thirds minus 1 over the fraction 4 thirds is equal to 1 over the fraction 4 thirds. Now I'm going to do this using arithmetic principles. I'm going to remind you that 1 over 2 thirds
is the same operation as 1 divided by 2 thirds. And the way that we divide by a fraction is that we multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to be 1 times 3 over 2, which is, of course, just 3 over 2. So we're going to use that principle to change all three of these terms by dividing 1 by the denominator. So this becomes 3 halves minus 4 thirds is going to flip and become 3 fourths. And again, 4 thirds is going to flip and become 3 fourths. So then the question is, is 3 halves minus 3 fourths equal to 3 fourths? And the only way we have to answer that is to get a common denominator, which means we'll multiply both the 3 and the 2 by 2 and change that into 6 over 4. And 6 over 4 minus 3 over 4 is 6 minus 3, all divided by 4, which in fact is 6 minus 3 is 3, divided by 4, and our solution checks. So our solution is x equals one-third. So take a minute, make sure you understand everything that you did, pause the slide, backtrack if you need to, and then we're going to go on to the next example. So here's our next example. And this one, actually, we only have two terms now, so finding the least common denominator is actually pretty simple, seeing that we already have um, two binomials that won't factor down any further. So our LCD is, in fact, going to be x minus 1. times x plus 1. So that when we multiply on the first part of the problem, 1 over x minus 1, what's going to happen is the x minus 1 we'll remove the factor of x minus 1, and we have x plus 1 times 1. And then repeating that on the other side, we have 2 over x plus 1, and the x plus 1 will remove the x plus 1 factor, but we'll keep the x minus 1 factor. So that'll give us 2 times x minus 1. One thing to note here, I don't usually show you shortcuts, but I will this time. If all you have is one fraction that's set equal to the other fraction, you can accomplish what we just accomplished by multiplying Just remove this up here. Now we still, you saw that we achieved this by getting the least common denominator. But I want you to notice that what we wound up with, only because we only have two fractions equal to each other, this is the only time this works, but because we have this, 
then we can achieve the solution by something called cross multiplication. 1 times x plus 1 and x plus 1 times 2. Now that's the only time that works. You can't do it if you have two fractions on one side. We couldn't have done this with any of the problems we worked up to this point. So that's just something I'm pointing out to you. You can always do the LCD method. So at this point what we really want to do is move to our second step which is to simplify what we have and x plus 1 times x is x plus 1 and 2 times x is 2x and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So now we need to solve for x and I will do that by subtracting x from both sides. And that leaves me with 1 equals 2x minus x leaves me with x minus 2. So then I'll add 2 to both sides. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So the solution appears to be x is equal to 3. And again, as we always should, we can check that, and we should check that. by plugging the solution, remembering that it is 3 equals x, or x equals 3, into the original problem. So we have 1 over x minus 1, which would be 1 over 3 minus 1, is that equal to 2 over x plus 1 and x is 3 so that will be 3 plus 1. Well 3 minus 1 is 2 so that's 1 over 2 and is that equal to 2 over 3 plus 1 is 4 and you can either verify that using your calculator or you can realize that 4 can be divided by 2 and leave 2 and 2 can be divided by 2 and leave 1. So that would be 1 over 2. And 1 over 2 does in fact equal 1 over 2. So yes, that means then that our solution is x equals 3. So again, pause it, make sure that you understand where everything came from, backtrack if you need to, and then we'll move on to the next example. And I'm going to suggest at this point that you solve this example and check your solution. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause and I want you to copy down this problem. I want you to factor 9 minus a squared into its prime factors, come up with the least common denominator, divide the entire, or excuse me, multiply the entire equation by that least common denominator and come up with a solution. Once you've come up with that solution, we will check it. So hit the pause button now and work the problem. So at this point, you should have worked the problem and found out that 9 minus a squared was equal to a plus 3 times a minus 3. 
and since the remaining two terms had, I'm sorry, and I did that incorrectly. Just let me back up. Nine minus a squared. is equal to 3 plus a times 3 minus a. And since my next fraction has the, fact, the denominator 3 plus a, I don't need to write it again. And since the one on the other side of the equals has the denominator 3 minus a, we don't need another copy of it. So this actually is the LCD. So what happened when you multiplied 12 over 9 minus a squared by the LCD was you wound up with just 12. Because 9 minus a squared had both of those factors. But when you multiplied 3 over 3 plus a times the LCD, what happened? was the 3 plus a canceled the 3 plus a, but it left you with the 3 minus a. And of course, then you're going to multiply that by the 3. And then similarly, on the other side of the equals, 3 minus a will cancel out the 3 minus a, but you'll have the 3 plus a to multiply times the 2. So when we simplify by removing the parentheses, what we have is 12 plus 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times negative a is minus 3a is equal to 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times a is 2a. So we'll combine like terms, 9 plus 12, or excuse me, 9 plus 12 plus 9 is 21, minus 3a is equal to 6 plus 2a. And I'll add 3a to both sides. So then I'll have 21 equals 6 plus 5a. And then I'll divide, I'll subtract 6 from both sides. And that'll leave me with 21 minus 6 is 15 is equal to 5a. So when I divide both sides by 5, I think the solution is a is equal to 3. So if you got a equals 3, you did everything correctly. You did not make any mistakes. However, remember our solution is that a is equal to 3. And our third step says we need to check that. So in order to check it, 
starting out we'll have 12 over 9 minus 3 squared plus 3 over 3 plus 3 is equal to 2 over 3 minus 3. And immediately, I hope you notice that you had a problem because 9 minus 3 squared is 9 minus 9, which is 0. And we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. And even if it worked there, because it does work here, 3 plus 3 is 6, it isn't going to work over here because we still, again, have 3 minus 3, which gives us a 0. And you cannot divide by 0. That is undefined. And you're going to hear this over and over again throughout your math career. You cannot divide by zero. Don't divide by zero. Therefore, even though we arrived at the solution A equals 3 by perfectly legitimate sound means, A equals 3 is not a solution because it causes a zero in the denominator. Therefore, there is no solution to this equation. You have no solution. So I hope you got that one right. Once again, just to emphasize, it is important that we always, 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 always check the proposed solution by substituting it into not the equation we used to get it, but the original equation before we ever did anything to it, before we ever made any changes. Because the original equation could not have x equal, or a equals 3 as a solution. So here we have one more example. And I'm actually going to let you check this example. I want you to pause it as you did before. And I want you to factor x squared plus 7x plus 10 and factor, six time, uh, factor 3x plus 6. And I want you to come up with the least common denominator, multiply through by it, solve this equation. And so that you know that your solution is correct, I'm going to tell you up front that your solution to this equation is x equals negative 7 over 5. So pause the recording right now and see if you get x equals negative 7 over 5. If you don't, then press the continue button, continue playing the solution, and I will explain to you how you get that solution. Then I'm going to leave it up to you to check your solution. Good luck. So at this point, you should have tried to find the solution. If you got your solution, x equals negative 7 over 5, you're done. You're ready to go do your homework. If you did not, let's see how we actually get that solution. The LCD here because x squared plus 7x plus 10 factors into x plus 2 and x plus 5 
and 3x plus 6 also factors into 3 times x plus 2. Then our LCD is x plus 2 times x plus 5. We don't need the extra x plus 2, but we do need the 3. So there's your LCD. So when I multiply, the first fraction by the LCD, I see that what happens is that the denominator here will remove both of those factors and will leave me only with the 3. So I'll have 3 times x plus 2 is equal to, now I'll go on and start working with 1 over 3x plus 6, but remember that the 3 doesn't need to be repeated, nor does the x plus 2. The only thing that I need there is going to be the x plus 5. So what I'll have is 1 times x plus 5. and then minus one over x plus five doesn't need the x plus five. It needs the three and the x plus two. So one times three times x plus two is three times x plus two. Now we're ready to multiply through and simplify. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 2 is 6, and it's positive, is equal to x plus 5 minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times plus 2, watch your signs, is minus 6. Now we need to combine like terms. x minus 3x, negative 2x. 5 minus 6, negative 1. 3x plus 6 is equal to negative 2x plus 1. Let's add 2x to both sides. and let's subtract 6 from both sides. So we have 3 plus 3x's plus 2x's is 5x, and minus 1 minus 6 is negative 7, so that leads us to the solution. x is equal to negative 7 over 5. And again, I will expect you to check that for yourself, but that is the correct answer. So this is our last example for this lesson. You're ready to do your homework and proceed on to the next lesson.